Happy Friday, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brian Petovich here. We're talking winter weather for the mountains and foothills. Two separate events that will impact the mountains and foothills. One starting today, kind of a typical northwest flow snow event with an Arctic front. The second system, more of an icy mess as we go into Sunday night and Monday. So let's get right to the details here. Um, here's our front. It's basically an Arctic front. Um, not a ton of moisture. The moisture with this is really associated with the Great Lakes. And I'm going to pause this and you can see the flow coming off the Great Lakes. Pretty good little northwest flow event. If this were to last longer, this could actually end up producing some decent snow. But because the trajectories aren't there very long, I expect this to be a quick blast of snow. So if you're in the mountains and foothills, um, the foothills probably less in the way of snow, but more wind. Um, but in the mountains, you're definitely going to see some snow today. And again, <clears throat> one to four inches depending on elevation is sure bet but the wind's going to be a big story as well this also is the first in a series of fronts that is going to bring us some much colder temperatures so let me quickly throw the temperatures on here because um, you could see the air behind this uh, cold front is legit look at the air up here in canada this is the cold air that's been advertised for a couple of days now um, starting to dive to the southeast again it's not extreme cold for us or record breaking but it is cold, especially for January, considering it's already a really cold month. These will be 10 to 15 below average temperatures. And to me, the biggest story with this isn't how cold it is, but how long the cold snap lasts. This is going to last all next week, possibly into the following week. So this is a good 7 to 10 day um, outbreak of cold air that's going to be with us. So highs at least 10 to 15 degrees below average by day and by night. So just be prepared for that right now, because... That is going to be a cold stretch of weather. So let's get into the uh, forecast for this system moving through. All right, so let's get into the forecast. We've got our Arctic front coming through today. Pretty classic northwest flow snow event, as well as the uh, cold front itself helping to enhance this snow. Um, the one thing I will tell you, it's going to be super windy. So you're not seeing this reflected here, but um, this coming over the mountains will create a, a mountain wave. And what that is, is when low level winds hit the mountains, they go up and down and create this wave pattern, which can enhance the wind speed. So just a heads up, we're, it's going to be a really windy day and night into the mountains and foothills. You see the northwest flow kind of persists through tomorrow morning, then it kind of tapers off. And then we start turning our attention to the next system. So we've got cold air in place. You can see the cold air spilling in. The equal lines of pressure are these isobars coming over the Great Lakes. So this is a really cold air mass beginning to take shape here. But it's kind of transient because as this system moves to the west, it, the cold air doesn't get anchored or trapped enough to produce wintry weather. So outside of the foothills in the mountains where that could get trapped, the, the air will start to warm up because the flow ahead of this thing is from the south. And because this is tracking to our north, this is gonna pull in warmer air from the south over time. So many areas south of the Virginia line, this is just gonna be rain um, as this system kind of tracks across the Ohio Valley. And you can see this system moving in. Now that's showing green, but that's all snow on the north side. There's gonna be this band of ice and, and sleet and ice could be a significant problem into Kentucky, Southern Ohio, um, into parts of North Carolina. And I'll show you the, the <coughs> excuse me, the orange, uh, jump coffee too fast. Um, the orange area, this is where we could see icing. So there's an area where I do anticipate some icy spots on Sunday night into Monday morning. It's going to be right in here. So this is an area we're going to watch. And even some of these ridges down in here, but the valleys, could be okay. But so think of Morganton, Lenore, Blowing Rock, Boone, Banner Elk. That's where we could see some icy setup. We'll go through time and you can see as this system moves through, there's actually a pretty strong uh, cold front back to the west with uh, some storms possible, maybe even severe weather down there. But because the flow is like this the and there's not cold air being pulled in, uh, this, this cold pocket of air gets used up quickly. The only area it holds on which it typically does is right up here against the eastern facing slopes and parts of the mountains. But even here, um, you know, as we get into closer to Monday um, morning, I think it starts to change to just all rain as the system moves through. So let's take a look at, you know, some of the possibilities here. We'll look at snow first. Um, this is the system this weekend dumping, you know, one to four inches of snow based on elevation. And then we'll go into Sunday night. You can see the system passing to our north. Um, and again, no snow really in North Carolina. Most of it's north. On the back side, there could be some snow here. But all in all, this is not much of a winter event for the Carolinas outside of the ice. Now, let me show you the ice setup here because this is ice accumulation. We'll go into Sunday night and Monday morning. I want to show you the area I kind of highlighted. See this area right here from Jefferson to Boone, Blowing Rock, Jonas Ridge, Linville Gorge, maybe Morganton to Lenore to Wilkesboro to Sparta. 
you know, this is the area we're watching for a little. And now it's not a lot of ice, but just enough that Monday morning. And I'll back this up to Monday morning because we'll go right here. This is Monday morning. That Yeah, there's going to be some icy spots up in here. So if you're in these areas, this is the area where we're likely have a winter weather advisory or maybe even um, a freezing rain advisory for Sunday night, Monday morning. That's the area we're watching. Now, long term, everyone's like, OK, Brad, what about this pattern? Yes, the pattern stays super cold, right? Um, let's look at that snowstorm to our north. This lays down some good snowpack over the Ohio Valley, moves out. Again, through day seven, this gets you through Friday morning. Not a lot of stuff showing up right now. What you can see, though, is when this system moves through, this cold air behind it will be spilling in, and we are going to see a very cold pattern setting up for the rest of next week. So just real quickly, we'll look at the long-range temperatures. You can see going into Monday, actually, this is you know today, Saturday, pretty cold tonight, right? Yeah, tomorrow morning, teens and, and 20. So a cold night tonight, cold weekend. But starting on Sunday, we're going to start to see temperatures moderate pretty quickly during the day because southerly winds get up. The only areas that could see that freezing rain, again, right here, again, this is going into um, Sunday night. Let's go to Monday morning. I'm going to go stop this at like 2 in the Let's stop this at just before sunrise. So you can see, yeah, it's a cold rain for many areas. The only areas near freezing are Lenore, Morganton, Boone, Jefferson, and Wilkesboro, and then up towards uh, Mount Airy. So those are the areas we'll watch for some freezing drizzle. But even there, you see temperatures warm up pretty quickly Monday. I mean, look at the surge of warm air on Monday. And then here comes the cold front. And next week, yeah, some of these nights are going to be pretty chilly. This is Wednesday morning, teens to low 20s. Thursday to me looks to be probably the coldest as we get into the morning hours right here. Yeah, I, I, I expect we'll see widespread teens and low 20s Thursday morning. We go to Friday. Yeah, the highs never get out of the 30s. So really cold, but not Arctic. I would say it's Arctic, but it's not extreme cold. Um, just mainly because this is the coldest time of year. So our records are pretty low, but at least 10 to 15 degrees below average all the way until next Monday and Tuesday, the 14th. So good two weeks into the month, temperatures are going to stay well, well below average. And so that's something that we're going to have to deal with a long prolonged cold spell now wintry precip chances we still got some opportunities late next week because this cold air is in place but there's no specifics it's just a pattern to keep an eye on there's no specific storm i can tell you but in that thursday friday saturday time frame late next week with this cold air in place there is some energy showing up in the guidance so real quickly, I'll just kind of hint at what could happen next week. The cold air is in place. Surface high pressure will go towards that Friday time frame. And there are still hints, all the guidance showing the pattern. Uh, we've got Arctic high pressure, cold air over most of the country, and a possible low pressure system trying to undercut that cold air or the dip in the jet stream. So the potential is still there. It's just the specifics are kind of wishy-washy. You see the low, you know, and not only is the low going to be there, is it not? Where does it track? next friday saturday i mean if it tracks a little too far north it pulls warm air um, up from the gulf of mexico and gives us a miserable cold rain if it tracks just a little bit to the south it has enough cold air but you don't want it too far south to be too far away you see how this is like threading a needle with these systems and why i hate looking at specific single forecasts because right now it's too far to know we just know somewhere in here next friday saturday we could have a storm with cold air in place. So it's something to keep an eye on, but I wouldn't get too excited right now for specific totals, anything like that. It's just something we're gonna be watching as we go into next week. The one sure thing I could tell you, it's gonna be cold, prolonged cold. So if you haven't winterized your car, your house, uh, disconnected hoses, do all that stuff. While it's not probably gonna burst pipes, um, the duration is gonna cause the temperature of your outdoor water spigots and stuff to drop pretty quickly. And we will see some issues with outdoor exposed pipes inside your house you should be fine modern insulation heating all that no need to drip right now i wouldn't say that unless you've had issues in the past but anything outside exposed crawl space hoses outdoor spigots certainly want to take full precautions irrigation systems pool equipment that type of stuff definitely needs to be winterized going into next week